guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will demonstrate how to create an API service using the codeless technology and add logic to that API service, which retrieves data from the database and then return the data from the API service. So whenever you invoke that service, you'll be getting the data from the Backendless database. To get started, I populated the database with some sample data, uh, specifically the three tables here, city, country, and country language. Primarily, I'll be working with the city table. And as you can see, these are just some of the largest cities in the world. We have the name of the city, population. We have a uh, relationship to the country that this city is in. It's through the country code. As you can see, it is a one-to-one -one relationship to the country. Uh, to get started with the actual API service, I'm going to switch to the business logic section. And the default tab is API services. Click the plus icon to create a new API service and then select code list. In here, type in the name of your service, it, whatever makes sense. In my uh, case, since I'm working with a city table or with the city data, I will call it city service. Click save. Once the service is created, Backendless automatically prompts you to create a codeless method because a service without any methods doesn't really make sense. It doesn't do anything. So there needs to be at least one method. The name of the method in my case is going to be get cities. Uh, in your case, of course, whatever makes sense. So make it as meaningful as possible where the name of the method reflects what that method does. The rest operation here is optional for the most cases. In Backendless, if the name of the method starts with get, then the corresponding rest op uh, operation will also be get, but you can specify it anyway. Uh, and keep in mind that this, this needs to follow the rest principle. So if you are uh, updating data or creating new data, then select post or put. If you're deleting, select delete. But once again, this needs to be more or less in tandem with how you name this method, but it is not required. The rest route is if you want to customize this rest route. By default, it is going to be the same as the method name. There are no parameters in my case or because I want to keep it simple. Uh, of course, in your case, you can add parameters if if needed. And uh, the parameters is just you specify the parameter name, select the data type of what it needs to be. And then the return type is needed primarily for uh, generation of the API docs. But in this case, let's just not even focus on this. So we have get cities, the operation is get, click save, and that method will be created. And as you can see in Codeless, it creates this default block that represents that method. And uh, by default, it doesn't do anything. In fact, you can already invoke it and get nothing because there is really no logic in that Codeless API service. Click Edit to, to, add, to go into the Codeless editor where we can start adding logic. So this is the Codeless API editor. Uh, in here, you have this toolbar with a bunch of different blocks and then we will be using some of them. Uh, and on this side, this is the browser of all the codeless uh, services, event handlers, functions, timers, uh, pretty much everything that you can do in codeless. And as you can see, we have the city service under API services, and the name of the method is get cities. Uh, the blue part, uh, the part in blue where, where it says city service, it's the deployment model, something very important. Uh, that allows you to deploy code in blocks or you can just deploy one service without impacting other services. More or less complicated or more complex uh, concept. Let's leave that for another video. So codeless logic to retrieve data from the city uh, table. Uh, as you can see in this section where, we, where it says backendless, all of these categories are for backendless APIs. And then all the APIs or all the blocks that represent those APIs are going to be in these categories. And generally, for every single API that exists in backendless, there is going to be a corresponding block for that representing that API. And these are just categories of the APIs that we have. So whenever you work with the database, it is going to be the data API category. And then these are individual blocks that provide access to various API functions. Retrieving data from the database is going to be this block. As you can see, it says load table objects. Drag it out here, and then you can just attach it to the return statement of this uh, city service. The table name is required. In fact, this is the only thing that is required. It's, uh, it's a city. This is just the name of the table where we're going to be retrieving objects from. 
The page size is important. You see where it says 10. It means that we will be asking back handlers to return no more but 10 objects. If you want to have more, just put in 100. In fact, 100 is the maximum in the backendless cloud version that you can retrieve. So if we want to get 100 cities, then put 100. Uh, at this point, the service is already uh, has enough logic where it can actually start doing something. We will enhance it a little bit, but at this point, let's deploy that model. Uh, and notice that there is this confirmation required. It basically says that you are deploying uh, business logic into the model called city service. If you already have that city service model on the server, it's going to be wiped out and then will be replaced with everything that you're deploying. But in our case, it is just one service in this model. Uh, if you understood what it means and you will remember that anything in that deployment model will be wiped out, just click Don't show it again, again, because it could get rather annoying uh, every time you deploy. Click Continue. And then you see right here, it shows that the model is being deployed and now it is deployed to production. That means that service is now alive. We can switch to the API services. And here it shows the what the logic looks like. Now let's click Invoke and we get the actual results. So now this service is already operational and can be invoked from the outside. In fact, right here, if we click Show URL and copy the whole thing, this is going to be the REST route, and this is the GET request. Let's copy it and open it up in another browser. And uh, let me just move it out here. So as you can see, I already invoked that service and I got, got the results. Okay, so these are the, the cities. Uh, how cool is it is i just cannot stop being amazed how simple it is to create an a fully functional api service that you can continue evolving and uh, start being able to use it from the outside world by your applications but that that was a digression anyway let's make this api service a little bit more robust uh, in a way where it just retrieves a little bit uh, not so much more data but specialized data as you can see we get a bunch of different properties here we have name and object ID and district and uh, the updated field when this object was updated if it is null, it had never been updated population and so on so let's just say that we will need to retrieve only population district and name that's that's all we're going to be requesting the service to return so once again population district name click edit and notice that one of the uh, connectors here, it says properties, okay? So in here, we can provide an array of property names that we want backend list to return. Whenever you work with arrays uh, or collections or lists, in fact, in, in CodeList, we call them lists. So this is the category that you need to go into under system, lists, okay? And then one of the blocks, it says create list with and uh, attach it to properties. And then what this will do, we will specify specific property names that we will be asking backhandlers to return for every object. And then these connectors are going to be for the specific property names. Uh, if you go into text, there will be this little block that you can use to specify a value that you want to be in there. So attach it to that list. And then we said it was population. You can select this guy and do uh, Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V if you're on uh, on Mac. Uh, so to replicate this block, district, or once again Command C, Command V, or just drag it from uh, from text. Again, doesn't really matter. I, I always find it easier to just replicate it. So we have population, district, and name. So this this basically says back analyst from city table return all the objects up to 100 for with with these properties included let's deploy it again switch to api services and let's invoke this guy so as you can see now we have name district and population some other fields like object id will always be returned because this uniquely identifies this specific object can you strip it out of course yes you you can you can strip it out in your codeless logic uh, you can strip out these uh, two guys and then by the way they're used by our SDKs to recognize what kind of class needs to be created because in SDK you do not really work with JSON you get with real objects that uh, provide access to it to this data but once again so here as you can see it, it did what we want now let's enhance it a little bit 
further and say that we also want to return the country name. Now, as far as the country name, remember that here in data, if we go back to city, the actual country is a relation. So it points to the country table. So for instance, if we take Kabul and click on relation, it switches to the country table and it says that this is going to be Afghanistan, where it is here is Afghanistan. Okay, so this is a completely separate table, but let's say we want to combine these two tables together and return also the country name uh, along with the cities. So let's go back to business logic. So here's our method, click edit. And uh, we need to add yet another property that will basically say for every city, return the country name. And this is how it, it's going to work. You see a little, little gear icon, click on it and then drag this item into this collection. And then what it does, it creates an additional connector. Okay, so select one of these, copy it, put it in here, and then this is where the magic happens. So the name of the relation co column is country code. I don't know why it's called country code, it just is. It would make more sense to call it country, but let's just say that it is country code. And then you put dot and then name. So this dot and name refers to column in the country table that uh, identifies the name of the related country. Okay, now if you do it like this, it will assign the property which will be name, and we already have names, so it'll be like two names, it doesn't really make sense. We want to assign that value to a different property, such as country name, and in this case, what you need to do is you put in the word as, and then name of the column, country name. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. So there are four properties that we'll be returning, one of them comes from the related table. Deploy this model. Go to API services, click invoke, and now it is now we have country name for every single city. This is pretty cool. There are many more things that you can do in here. Pretty much everything that Backendless does through the APIs can be done with Codeless. But at this point, I will stop because I just wanted to demonstrate the process of creating the API service and adding the logic of retrieving data from the database, and uh, which which is already a lot, of course. A lot more can be done and I plan to produce a lot more videos talking about various things that you can do in Codeless. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching this video and as always, happy coding!